Okay, so let's move on to lesson 9-2. So we're going to be talking about angle relationships today, and this is going to be another one of those lessons that's going to have a lot of vocabulary. So you might want to just kind of, you know, look back over this um, at another point, um, um, possibly when you're getting ready for a quiz or a test. Um, but it's going to be full of a lot of uh, vocabulary. You can also follow along in your text or uh, review all of this out of the text. But we're going to be talking about um, relationships between angles. All right, so let's start with the easiest one. So if you have two angles that are next to each other, okay, and they share, I didn't draw that perfectly, my stylus is not cooperating, but they share a vertex right there. These angles are called adjacent. Okay, and uh, adjacent just means next to each other. So, you know, you, your neighbors that live next door to you, th you live in adjacent houses, okay? So just two angles that are next to each other. Now, if we want to get more mathematical, um, they share a vertex, the dot down at the bottom, and they share a ray that divides them in half, okay? Adjacent angles aren't just kind of, you know, sort of next to each other like this. These would not be considered adjacent angles. They have to actually share a vertex, and they actually have to share a ray, okay? Um, now, the next term... <clears throat> Um, are for vertical angles, and they form anytime you have lines that intersect. I'm going to go ahead and just to give us a little bit of a cheat here, I'm going to give each of these angles um, that are formed by these lines uh, a number. Okay, And if you look at this closely, I think it's going to be kind of obvious. If you look at the angles that are across from each other, either 2 and 4 uh, or 1 and 3, these are called vertical angles. Okay, um, And vertical doesn't mean the normal vertical like vertical and horizontal. It just means across from each other. So 1 and 3 are also vertical angles. There's no such thing as horizontal angles. And what we find out about vertical angles is that they are congruent. They're going to be the same size and shape. Okay, Now again, not you know, you got to be careful. It's got to be two intersecting lines. So if you have a line like this, and then you have a ray kind of shooting out like this, and then you have another ray kind of shooting off at a different angle, that's not two lines crossing. Okay, it's got to be two straight lines that cross each other, and all the angles across from each other are equal, and they're called vertical angles. Okay, so adjacent angles um, share a, a vertex and array. Vertical angles are across from each other. It also is going to be true that they share a vertex too, by the way, um, and they are going to be equal angles. All right, the next two relationships um, have to do with what the angles add up to. Okay, so if I take a 90-degree angle and I cut it, into some two pieces. We'll call this again angle one and angle two. Well, if you put angle one and angle two together, um, clearly they're going to add up to the right angle, right? <coughs> A lot of rights in there. Um, so this is called complementary. And complementary um, angles, complementary, let's make sure I spell this right. Okay, complementary angles, and this is the symbol for angle. Um, it's a little, it's almost like an L with a little curve across it. Complementary angles add to 90 degrees. Okay, now, they don't have to be adjacent angles, again, using the vocabulary term from the last slide. Um, so you could have complementary angles, in this case, that are non-adjacent. So let's draw this angle and this angle. And as long as they add up to 90 degrees, they could even be separated quite a ways. Um, you could say that any two 45-degree angles are going to be complementary to each other. Okay, um, so complementary means they add to 90. All right, um, now supplementary means they add up to 180. So now let's take a line and divide it into two angles. Okay, and we'll call this angle three and we'll call this angle four. Okay, and so supplementary angles, okay, supplementary, uh, are angles that add up to 180. Okay, and again, they don't have to be adjacent angles. Uh, in fact, we could say all right angles in the world, they're all 90 degrees, right? So if you add them together, any two right angles are supplementary because they're going to add up to 180. So that's called supplementary. And that has to do with what the angles add up to. So complementary and supplementary have to do whether they add up to 90, 180. Uh, a quick way to remember these and keep them straight, uh, 90 comes before 180, and in the alphabet, C comes before S. Okay, That's one way to keep it straight. Uh, there's some other ways, and we'll talk about those in class um, tomorrow. Okay, All right, <clears throat> continuing on. The next diagram is really cool. This is one of my favorites. It's when you have two lines. Usually they're parallel, but they don't have to be. And you cut them with a third line. Now, this third line cuts across the other lines. And if you think about a lot of the words that we have in the English language that mean across things, a lot of times they have the, um, abri or the, the prefix trans in them. So we have the transcontinental railroad. Um, we have trans-Pacific flights. When the Titanic sunk, it was making a transatlantic crossing. This is called a transversal. Okay, And again, the trans means across. So the line that cuts across is a transversal. And again, let's just make this a little easier to talk about them. And you can number them any way you want. I'm just going to kind of go down here and give them all a number. Okay, When you have a transversal, 
uh, that cuts across a pair of lines, you get all these angles here. Now, you can see some of the things we've already talked about. You could find adjacent angles, I think. You could find right here, angles 1 and 2 are adjacent. You could find angles 1 and 4 are vertical angles. Okay, um, You could find angles um, that... Um, Although those are the pretty much, there's no complementary angles. Oh, we do have supplementary angles. Any two angles next to each other would be supplementary. All right, but we're going to have some other things too. We've got something called corresponding angles. And I like corresponding angles. Suppose that you knew that this was a street. And somebody told you, go up this street. When you get to the corner, the house kind of across the street on the left is the one you're looking for. Okay, that's, that's where the party is. Okay, that's, you're going to a birthday party. Well, but you forget which street it is. Is it Elm Street? that you were supposed to go to and look across, or was it Maple? All you remembered, it was, a, it was a street that was a tree name. You didn't realize there were two of them. So the two houses that would, would be kind of across the street on the left would be either House 1 or House 5, depending on which street. That's what we mean by corresponding. They're in the same relative place. They're both kind of up and to the left of the intersection. Okay, And so by the same token, I think you can probably find other pairs of corresponding angles. So what angle would correspond with angle 2? If you're thinking angle 6, you are correct. Okay, uh, angle three would correspond with angle seven, and obviously four goes to eight. Okay, so there are angles that are in the same relative position. Okay, um, another way to think of it, they lie on the same um, side of the transversal. Okay, um, and they're uh, also in corresponding things. So in this case, they were both above uh, the two lines that we were talking about. All right, um, now um, there's another relationship. Let me take all those away. There's another relationship, um, and that's called alternate interior angles. Now, interior angles, first of all, let's talk about the interior. The interior is the stuff that's in here between the two lines. So that's going to be angles 3, 4, 5, and 6. And when we talk about alternate, what we mean is alternate sides of the transversal. So alternate interior angles, angle 3, the other angle that's on the alternate side of the transversal that's still an interior angle would be angle 6. And it's also got to be alternate intersections. So it's not 3 and 4, it's 3 and 6. Uh, or we could do 4 and we could do 5. And those are called alternate, we usually abbreviate this, interior angles. And that's a perfectly fine abbreviation. Some people also call it AIA. Okay. And we're going to learn that when the lines are parallel, okay, when these two lines here are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are actually going to be equal. Okay, now I know that was a lot of terms, but let's just review them very quickly. So we've got the transversal. We've got the alternate interior angles. Uh, I'm going to remind you, I've already kind of erased the circles, but we had corresponding angles. Those are the ones like 1 and 5. They're in the same relative position. Backing up, we have complementary and supplementary, which has to do what it adds up to. Complementary adds up to 90. Supplementary adds up to 180. Okay? Angles that are next to each other that share both a vertex and array are adjacent angles, and angles that are across from each other are vertical angles. If you put all this together, it is actually incredibly powerful. Okay? So you can get a diagram that looks something like this, where you know that these are parallel lines, and you have a line that cuts down through them, and they tell you one angle right here is 65 degrees. Well, think about all the things we can figure out if we put together all of what we just talked about. The easiest one to do is probably the angle across from it. The vertical angle is going to be 65 degrees. Okay? If the angles are parallel, the alternate interior angle down here is also going to be 65 degrees. And then across from it is another vertical angle, and that's 65 degrees. So all four of these angles are 65. Okay? Now, if I look adjacent to 65, I see an angle that's going to be supplementary with 65, which means they have to add up to 180. Well, if one of the angles is 65, I just take that away, I get 115 degrees. So that means that this angle must here, must up here must be 115. But by the same thing we just did, that makes this 115, the alternate interior angles make this 115, and the vertical angles make this 115. So even though there were eight different angles here, there's only really two angle measures, and using these different relationships, I can get all eight of the angles if all I'm given is one of the eight angles. Okay, so that's why this is just so powerful. All right, I want to keep this video under 10 minutes, so thank you very much for tuning in and watching, and we're going to just practice this in class tomorrow. So have a good night, and I'll see you in class tomorrow. Goodbye.